Ukraine will soon be able to use decommissioned Australian Abrams battle tanks in the war against Russia, according to the Sydney Morning Herald. The newspaper reports that the Australian government, together with the administration of US President Joe Biden, is working on a plan to send American-made Abrams M1A1 tanks to Ukraine. At the same time, Australian Defence Minister Richard Marles says that there are a number of opportunities that they are considering with the Ukrainian government. Sources in the Australian government said that Marles is studying how to ship the tanks in line with US defence export regulations. One of the most experienced commanders of the Australian Army, General Peter Lay, supported the idea of transferring decommissioned tanks to Ukraine. I am surprised that these tanks have not yet been offered to Ukraine. Although they are being decommissioned, they are high-quality equipment that has maintenance and spare parts, and the Ukrainians really need them, the general said. The M1A1 Abrams tanks purchased by Australia in 2004 for $550 million have not seen combat and are due to be replaced by newer models. In July, Australia decommissioned 59 of the tanks, raising questions about their fate, storage, disposal or transfer to Ukraine. In addition, the Ukrainian community in Australia expressed outrage that decommissioned military equipment, including patrol cars and inflatable boats, are being sold on online auctions rather than sent to the front. Vasil Maroshnichenko, Ukraine's ambassador to Australia, stressed that tanks were a key element of defence. Our soldiers need them and would be happy to use them if Australia provided them directly or through the US. Defence Secretary Richard Marles, who ruled out sending tanks to Ukraine in February, recently softened his stance, saying, We are in discussions with the Ukrainian government on various options. Government sources also confirmed that Marles is investigating how to ensure the transfer of the tanks complies with US military export regulations. Several months before the inauguration of President Vladimir Putin in May 2024, representatives of the Russian Defense Ministry insisted on a new stage of mobilization, but the Russian dictator rejected this idea, writes the Wall Street Journal. The head of the Kremlin, according to the publication, said that he wants to use only contract soldiers to replenish troops and compensate for losses at the front, but now he is under intense pressure. Since in almost three years of war, the Russian armed forces have lost about one million people killed and wounded. The mobilization could have serious political consequences for Putin, the media notes. But at the same time, Russia is losing more soldiers on the battlefield than it can recruit to replace them. The article says, the forces are currently insufficient to achieve the original goals of the war, to remove Ukraine from the conflict, to undermine its military potential or to protect the border areas of Russian territory. More and more people say that mobilization is inevitable, the media source said. Journalists report that during the first wave of mobilization in the Russian Federation, during which the occupiers planned to add 300,000 people to the army, the Russian authorities faced protests and the need to close the border in some regions. According to their data, although Russia has an advantage in population compared to Ukraine, the shortage of personnel remains a serious problem for them. Russia did not commit to sending key frontline forces to Kursk, but given its limitations, it was forced to redeploy troops from Kherson and Zaporozhye, where they were less needed, said Rob Lee, a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, an American think tank. By some estimates, Russia is recruiting around 1,000 people a day, while according to the UK, the occupiers are losing around 1,100 soldiers a day at the front. As the article says, Russian leaders are not announcing a new wave of mobilization because of concerns that this process will upset the fragile balance of how society perceives the war. This could have dangerous political consequences for Putin. The independent sociological service Levada Center in Russia published the results of a survey in which 46% of the population of the aggressor country admitted to fearing mobilization. This is 12% more than in February 2024.